Ani, who's a Middle East analyst focused on Iraq. He's joining us uh, here from Doha. Thanks for your time with us on the news hour. Officials are saying um, investigation is still ongoing. Uh, who do you think was behind it? And in fact, will we ever know? It is very clear that the, the protesters or the attackers behind this are the followers of the same political parties and paramilitary groups that are associated with the Fatah Alliance, which is the parliamentary uh, coalition known for its affiliation with Iran's interests within the PMF and Iraqi politics in general. Uh, we witnessed in the last early elections that took place on October 10th that Fatah Alliance won 17 parliamentary seats in contrast to their 48 seats which was won in 2018 parliamentary elections. This is a huge loss to their parliamentary influence. It also represents a major setback uh, to their political and social influence which they believed was an asset that they enjoyed uh, from Iraq's victory against ISIS in 2017, which they, of course, were a part of. However, in October 2019, and when the October protest movement kicked off around Iraq uh, with protests calling for reforms, systematic change, an end to corruption, and an end to sectarianism and regional interventionism with a particular focus on Iran, it was clear that the protesters and activists and researchers were facing uh, political violence from the very same uh, armed groups that claimed to liberate Iraq from ISIS. These groups are the ones arguably uh, protesting and attacking Prime Minister Khalidmi's government and denouncing the integrity of the elections, which they for years praised and promoted for. It's also clearer now than ever that the Sadrus movement with the 73 seats and Taqaddum party led by uh, Mohammed Al Halbousi, who's the uh, current Speaker of Parliament, and Masoud Barazani's KDP, will form a majority government with some other alliances with other small parties. And the negotiations to propose the upcoming Prime Minister seems to be, it will either be to continue uh, the term with current Prime Minister Kadami, who's in good alignment and cooperation with Sadr, Halbousi, and Barazani. Or the Sadrist might propose a Sadrist candidate, which seems so far to be unlikely in contrast to uh, Kaldemi's uh, options. Right. Our chances. reporter on the ground, um, our, our reporter on the ground uh, was speaking to some of the protesters that remain camped uh, outside the vicinity of the green zone and um, uh, who belong to some of the parties that you were just mentioning. And they were saying that, well, it wasn't them. And this could be some sort of third power, uh, third party, excuse me, trying to uh, foment strife in the country. Is that a likely possibility? Um, it is very expected that they call it a, a third party or a third side uh, doing this. That was the same justification they used when they were attacking, publicly and openly attacking and killing protesters uh, during the October protest movement. Um, they can't, of course, claim that they will be attacking the prime minister. However, throughout their social media, official social media platforms and channels, they were threatening Prime Minister Kalami. They were threatening the government that they would lead to armed disobedience. Uh, so one day they are threatening something, and then the next day they're actually implementing it. What so about Khadami himself? He's called, uh, the prime minister spoke after that attack, and he is calling on all factions for a constructive dialogue going forward. That's what he's saying. I mean, it, how likely is that, given the mood on the streets and the shadow that has been cast in the wake of the uh, disputed elections, disputed by some, I should say? Well, he, he's betting on the last chances of trying to convince uh, the protesters or the parliamentary groups on the streets for a constructive dialogue. It's also a, a, a discourse that is expected from a prime minister who is not really sure or confident enough that he might be the prime minister uh, for the next term. Um, he and the rest of the Iraqi government are aware that the Fatah Alliance supporters have lost their parliamentary influence. They so far won't, might not have an influence to name the prime minister or most of the power ministries. So they're using their, their last tool or method of pressure, which is violence. Uh, it's a very similar method they used against the protesters who protested against the political class or a government that was influenced by their political parties or their armed groups. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Zaydun al-Kainani, we thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera.